Hey everyone, the Global Surveyor here. I'm on the corner of Namba Road and Thud Dungra Road, Duffy's Forest. And I'm undertaking a boundary survey today here. We've got this old survey plan, C7260, small number 2030, C standing for the County of Cumberland. And um, I'm working on what was portion 388, it's now lot 388. And uh, you can see a, a D for dog there, reference mark. Well, D for dog is a galvanized iron pipe, 221 degrees 57 for 3.05 links. And this survey was dated in 1954. So this survey mark was placed good, you know, 70 odd years ago. And lo and behold, I found it. Super, super excited. There we have a galvanized iron pipe buried in the ground 70 years ago. Still there, not dug out. And um, I found it with my trusty metal detector. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna find quite a few other survey marks today. So stick around, enjoy the ride. And please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, as your support is greatly appreciated. So using the GS18 GPS receiver here, um, got it with on a bipod and I've turned the tilt off. You can see the accuracy. You get the sunlight the right way. 11 mils vertically and 5 mils horizontally and uh, we've been going for 168 positions we actually go to 180 and it will store we'll see here point stored as you can just see it's just stored after 180 readings it means them all up so it's, it's actually quite accurate by the time finishes those 180 readings. Incredible accuracy under this thick canopy. Now we're down the other end of Namba Road where my finger's pointing and at corner A there we have another GI pipe 137 degrees 30 for 3.08 links which is 0.619 meters. Well there's a a newish fence. There's an old galvanized iron pipe, more than 70 years old. Well, 70 years since it was placed. Still in excellent condition and uh, very excited to find this, which means I'm well and truly established now. Once I calculate between these two pipes, I can find all the marks I need and start working on my boundary survey. Not a bad place to be. Look at these banks here. And you can see some other native flowers. As we are very hot day today, here in Duffy's Forest, 29 degrees, I think it's going to be. There could be worse places to be. And you can see, we're going to be taking 180 readings on each point. And look at the accuracy, 3 mils horizontal, 6 mils vertical, 27 satellites. You get out a ruler and have a look how big three millimeters actually is. It's not much. So as you might have seen in previous videos, I, I get a copy of the original plan and then I start drawing up on a pseudo coordinate system, sort of whatever coordinate system I like. On this instance, I just called my point number one, 100, 100, which is Lot 388 is where I'm working. And point one there, I just called 100, 100, and then I start plotting all the shape 
of the subdivision and all the survey marks and they get all coordinates. And everything gets a point number. I forgot to plot the reference mark for corner A. So I've, I've loaded that now into the controller and that's got a new point, 1001. And so I've now got GI pipe 13 and GI pipe 1001. So I've got essentially these two marks. So now I can do a calculation using those two marks and adjust my GPS receiver and straight away I can start looking for lots of other things. So we're going to do what's called in the Leica Captivate software create coordinate system and it's a one step. I'm going to give my localization file a number. It's hard to do this whilst I'm videoing. I'll just call it 2346 for, for what it's worth. And the height mode I'm going to call orthometric. Now the geoid model, if I was working uh, just connected to CauseNet and on MGA coordinates, I'd be using the uh, geoid model of 2020 New South Wales. In this instance, I want to call it none because I'd like to transfer the GPS receiver information onto the local system. So we're going to add two points. So the first thing is the WGS 84 point. Well, the first point I read was a thousand. And that was to GI pipe number 13. And we're only going to take the position. We're not going to take the height because I haven't assigned a height. And the new point, the WGS 84, in this instance, it's 1002. And 1001 was the point that I plotted. Again, if you're a surveyor, this might be interesting to you. If you're not a surveyor, well, feel free, feel free to uh, skip forward if you wish, but this is quite interesting. So we're going to do a calculation now. And I've got a result here. Basically what it's doing now is all the corrections that I'm getting from my cause station, it's going to apply a shift and residuals are 0000 because I've only got the two points. When I find a third point, um, those residuals may change slightly. There we go. So now I'm on the local system. So if I go to my job file here, you can see that my, scroll over to the coordinate system, my coordinate system is now on 2346, which is my localization file and not GDA 2020, which is what I was working on. So I'm now going to go find some survey marks and see how I go. So now at the other corner here, corner L, Biramal Road, just near a bus stop. And um, before staking out, you can see that someone's had a bit of a dig here. There's a hole in the ground just near the fence post. It looks like the right distance. And my number here is 25. We're going to see whether the GPS says that there's a mark right here in this hole. What do you know? 11 mils by 30 mils and I haven't even dug a hole. Well, I better dig a hole and find this mark. Digging a hole is one thing, finding the mark is another. So let's, let's put this uh, metal detector on. 
Got the sensitivity sort of halfway. Let's see what happens when I put it over the hole here. See, see, got it over the over the ground here. And the moment I go over the hole. Right there, let's have a dig. And sure enough, there's a GI pipe. Another 70 year old gem there, still in good nick. Can we make four, which would actually then define the entire block of subdivided blocks? Who knows? And just before I measure that, I'll just quickly show you. This is the, the metal detector that I bought. It's actually branded a DML2000. It's quite old now, by Dun, Dunham and Morrow um, in America there. I bought it from PHM Survey Equipment in Sydney. And uh, it hasn't failed me. You've really got to treat it carefully because um, it is quite sensitive. And um, make sure you replace the batteries and Make sure that you pull the batteries, uh, check the batteries every so often. But uh, the best thing about it is it saves me having to dig a hole if I don't have to dig a hole. So I've just added that third point, that third corner, and undertaken a new uh, calculation here. And you can see that the residuals are 9 mils by 13 millimetres. Again, if you hold get out a scale rule or a ruler and have a look to see how big nine millimeters is and 13 mils. And considering the survey was undertaken in 1954, that's pretty excellent accuracy for the Crown Land Surveyor. Well done to you. So I'm at the fourth corner of this large block here. It says uh, Duffy's Forest Bridle Path. Place for uh, riding your horse around here over there through this little path here and when I stake out this GI pipe it lands right here right there no one's had a dig for it there's no evidence of any hole when I turn on Some sort of activity there. Some sort of activity, but uh, I don't know if that's a bit of metal or rock or iron stone or something. I don't know. I'll have a dig. Well, I had a good dig here and nothing was to be found, unfortunately. But I'm not uh, done yet. I've still got a couple of more marks that I can look for at the client's corner. Corner. Uh, sorry, E for egg there, C and E. If you look at the table, E says 341 degrees 54 for a gum for 17.5 links, which is about three and a half metres. Well, that's a gum there, and it's kind of in the right direction, but um, it's not very big for a 1954 tree. I don't know about that quite old it's quite dead maybe that's the reason why it's not so big anymore but I don't think if it is a tree there's no evidence of any blaze so it looks like I've just got three marks for today's survey which will be enough for me to do what I need to do um, thanks very much for watching everyone please like and subscribe to the channel and uh, See you next time. If I <clears throat> manage to post this video, you know I'm still alive. Just up here, just on the hill there. See it walking now. There's a plover. And uh, the area where I'm trying to mark a shed here, a boundary in a shed. Must be where their nest is. And 
Those little turkeys keep swooping at me. Here he comes. They don't like me being here. They really don't like me being here. Last resort here. I've got my brush hook. I'm ready to go. All I want to do is put in about two or three pegs, you buggers. Look at it, here he comes. This little pocket of trees here apparently is protected. There's some tags on the tree there. And, um, Whenever I'm working in the field, always nosy neighbours come up to me and say, what are you doing? You know, thinking that I'm the, the mean one here, going to bulldoze all these trees. And all I'm trying to do is take some measurements on a state survey mark, a permanent mark. It took me a little while to find because it was covered in a lot of dirt, but I'm glad it's the end of the day. Those plover birds really had a go at me and probably delayed my job by about two hours. So um, this is the last uh, part of it. Just getting and adjusting my height on this survey mark. And then it's time to go home. Hope everyone has a great weekend, long weekend here in Sydney, Australia. And um, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for watching if you got this far and see you later.